code there. Right now. All right, and then we're going to go live on Facebook. Just give me a second or two to get that rolling. Jan, while we're waiting, would you mind going ahead and muting yourself until it's your um, time? And um, Kate, I don't have control over muting you either. <laughs> but happy birthday. Okay, I'm having trouble with this here for some reason. Let me get out of that. We'll try it again. Come on now. Gail, I think you may, I want to, um, hang on. You may want to take this back because I'm struggling with it on my end now. All right, I'll go ahead and try again. Reclaim. Because it keeps trying to put me live as myself versus the township for some reason. Sorry about that. No, I'm having the same issue. Okay. You know what? I'm going to try to log out of Facebook. Maybe that'll be. Thank you all for your patience as we learn. Okay, I log myself out of Facebook on my iPad too, so. Okay, when I'm, then I'll go ahead and give you back post. All right, looks like we're now live. Beautiful. I'd like to call the meeting to order and use my gavel for the first time, <laughs> um, which I have kept since high school. Um, I'll ask the clerk, Nicole Capretta, to, to read the roll. Here, Gail Snitcher Eisenberg, supervisor. Here. Stephen Moser, trustee. I see he said here, but he was still on mute. Present. Oh, there you go. Elliot Nicole, Robinson. you'll you'll want to jack up your volume a bit. I can barely hear you. I don't know about the rest of us. Elliot Robbins. Here. Danielle Rubin. Here. Jan Churchwell Assessor. Here. Here. Okay. Here. Uh, do I do I call the other people or do I just mark them as present? So I see that or do they have to announce themselves? Um, I my my policy will be that only those who are um, um, either a staff member or an elected official need be called in the roles. So feel free to call for Diane Ty and Larisha Pearson. Diane Ty. Diane, are you here? Here, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Larisha <laughs> Pearson. Here. And is Jack Jack McCall? Is he considered staff? Here. Jack, are you here? Yes, I'm here. And then also present. Um, I see uh, we have two other people participating today. Could you state your name? You seem to have missed the trustees, or at least a couple of us. My name is Mary Miller, oh. and I'm um, here representing the League of Women Voters of Wilmette as an observer. 
John, did I did I miss you? Yes. I oh, so mm -hmm. apologize about that. I maybe it's, my headphones weren't there. John Thomas, trustee. Here. Thank you. Do we have a quorum for I, business? We do have a quorum for official business. It's been established. And are there any other members of the public? My apologies. My name is Kate Kassam McNally. I reside in Winneka and I'm just here to observe. Thank you. We'll now um, start with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One nation and justice for all. The first order of business is public comments. Is there anybody from the public who would like to make such comments? Seeing none, Jack, can you go ahead and check Facebook Live to make sure we don't have any comments there? Jack, can I get a yes or no? No. Seeing no comments on Facebook Live either, we'll continue with our agenda, um, which is approval of Jerome Hoynes' draft minutes from previous Board of Trustees minute, uh, meetings. Um, trustees should have received copies of those minutes in their email. Um, can every, um, those who, who were on the previous board can vote. I ask that Danielle not vote on previous minutes. Um, so, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. I have um, uh, three minutes. I have his minutes from the meeting of March 16th, his minutes from the meeting of April 20th, and his minutes from the um, May 25th special meeting, which were actually on May 16th, I'm sorry, about a week and a half ago. And I move to approve all three sets of minutes. Second. Being that it has been moved and seconded, we will now go to a voice vote per, um, pursuant to the changes in the Open Meetings Act for the declaration of emergency. Um, Madam Clerk. Second Moser. I had a question on the last set of minutes. Here we go. Sure, I'm sorry. I just want to confirm, Jan, your term starts January of the subsequent year, correct? Correct. That's correct. And that's why you'll be sworn in a year in January as opposed to now. Right. Okay, just confirming it, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I will call for the voice vote. Trustee <coughs> Moser? Approved. Trustee Robbins? Um, I approve the first two sets of minutes and I abstain as to the third set because I wasn't at that meeting. Trustee Thomas? Approve. I believe those were the only... Day would you Clerk, I am a voting member of okay. the board. So, and I approve okay. of all three sets of minutes. Okay. So I believe we have... All three have been um, approved and can now be posted to our website. And that should bring us up to date on our minutes. So congratulations to everyone. Okay, uh, our next order of business would be, the, would be the swearing in of Trustee Robbins to his second term, Madam Clerk. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Supervisor, this is Paul Lively. Uh, we were just able to get into the meeting uh, through the technology. Has the public comment section been heard yet? It has, but we can return back to um, to public comments um, in just a moment. We'll finish our swearing great. of Trustee Robbins and we can revisit public comment. Thank you. Trustee Robbins, if you could raise your right hand and then repeat after me. I, Elliot Robbins. I, Elliot Robbins. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. 
that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully <clears throat> discharge the duties. <clears throat> of the Office of Trustee of Near Trier Township. Of the Office of Trustee of New Trier Township. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much. At this time, I would um, entertain a motion to suspend the rules so we can return back to public comment. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, oh, we have to take a voice vote, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Supervisor Eisenberg? Yes. Trustee Mosier? Yes. Trustee Robbins? Yes. Trustee Rubin? Yes. Trustee Thomas? I think that's a yes. I'm on yes? mute. Trustee Thomas? Jack, I think you have controls. Would you mind trying to unmute John? Did he freeze? Trustee Thomas, can you hear us? No, he's moving. <laughs> can you give us a thumbs up if you can't unmute? Zoom just kicked me out of the meeting the last four minutes. That's why. <laughs> I have, okay. and it's just doing it again. Mr. Um, Thomas, we were just taking a, a roll call vote on if we could return to the public comments. Yes, I heard the commentary, but uh, my answer is approve or yes, sure. Great, thank you. Is there any more public comment? Uh, this is Paul Lively, I have a, a comment. Yes, the chair recognizes Paul Lively. Thank you very much. Uh, I am the volunteer chair of the Agency Oversight Committee, and I was listening to the tape of the April 20 regular board meeting. And listening to that tape, I became concerned that the trustees and administration had not seen the committee's written document referred to as, I'll quote it here, comments of the AOC to draft memos submitted to the AOC by Trustee Robbins, unquote. Uh, specifically, the, the supervisor at that meeting stated that the committee's issue was moot because Trustee Thomas was no longer the liaison for the committee. While that statement is correct as to the trustee's liaison status, it overlooks the committee's comment at paragraphs number five and six of the written document expressing its concern about the trustee's continuing involvement at the board level. And I'm gonna quote from the document itself. The document says, the AOC voiced concern that trustee Thomas did not disclose his affiliation with the WYO at the trustee meeting on February 23, 2021. And at that public meeting, seconded the motion for approval of the agency funding allocations and voted in favor of the motion. The AOC expressed concern that as treasurer of the WIO, trustee Thomas has a duty to oversee, excuse me, and procure funds for the WIO, which is in direct conflict with his duty as an NTT trustee to review and approve funding requests to agencies, including the WIO. Additionally, it was highlighted that NTT funding provides one third to one half of the WYO's annual budget, unquote. Uh, I wanna note that these written comments were sent by me on March 29th of this year to Trustee Robbins and the Com Community Service Administrator. It was a committee's understanding that its written comments were to be distributed to be assistance to all the trustees and the administration. However, in a May 5 email, from trustee Thomas copied to me, he asked, 
where might I find that reference, quote, memo to the board, unquote. It doesn't seem to be in any material I received prior to the board meeting. In short, it is the committee's hope that its written comments be distributed to all trustees for review and consideration and be made a part of the public record. Thank you very much. Thank you um, for your comments. Um, just as a point of privilege, um, I will note that the memo was distributed via email to all trustees prior to the meeting um, and has been provided as, um, as a public record to the record North Shore on their request. Um, and now that, and now John Thomas has received a copy, um, has received a second copy of that memo. Um, I appreciate your comments and we will take them under advisement. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing none, we will go to supervisor's report. Um, please bear with me since this is the first time I get to do this and I can do it a little longer this time. <laughs> um, but I wanna first of all, thank Alan Goldberg for his leadership over the last four years and the previous terms that he has had in um, leading our township. I'd like to thank Jerome Hoynes for his service as our clerk, um, our longtime clerk and Sandy Forrester for her service as well as deputy clerk. I'd like to welcome Nicole Capretta as our clerk and Danielle Rubin as a new trustee to our board. Um, at this time, um, FOIA, I'd like to designate Nicole Capretta as our FOIA officer. FOIA requires that all public bodies designate one or more office officials as the FOIA officer. The FOIA officer or designee shall receive the request for records and ensure that the public body responds to the request in a timely fashion and issue responses under FOIA. Thus, I would like to appoint Nicole to be our FOIA officer. I don't believe I need to have second. Um, so congratulations, Nicole. She'll have, 30, she'll have 30 days to complete electronic training. For everyone else, you may also know that you, as an elected official, you are required to complete FOIA and um, Freedom of Information Act and, uh, and Open Meetings Act training no later than the 90th day after you take the oath of office. So for most of us, that'd be August 14th, 2021. Um, I, usually you can do that on the Attorney General's website, um, but it is currently down. Um, I called the Attorney General's um, phone number, the, the public access office, and it is due to that breach that occurred, well publicized breach at the Attorney General's office, that website is currently not operable. Um, so it should be up I'm, you know, as soon as possible and hopefully before August 14th. That said, there are there is a separate training as well through TOI this summer. So if, that will be our backup plan as well. Um, and I do encourage everyone to um, to take that seriously as it, it, it pertains to much of what we do here. Um, I'd like to make a couple reports on recent events. We um, sponsored two contactless drive through donation events for housewares, one in March at the Glencoe train station and one in April at Winnetka Presbyterian, who um, we gave an award to for their partnership with the township at our last annual meeting. Um, I have numbers for the April event, which are extremely impressive. We had 210 donors and made 98 kitchenware boxes um, from the organization's guests. Uh, we collected enough kitchenware for 200 plus households. And that's pretty incredible in five hours. Um, and it was just a well-oiled machine that the township volunteers were all amazing. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can do that program again. I believe we were the first organization to sponsor such kind, such a drive. Um, we also have been working with the Nutrium Municipal Governments on the vaccine clinics, trying to encourage people to get out there and get their vaccines. Volunteers are needed for tomorrow's event. It's a second dose. So please let me know if you would like the link to sign up and I will provide that to you. Um, and that would be at Nutria West in the, in the main gym. Um, another update, I'm pretty excited to, to share that I, um, I approached state representative, uh, state senator now, Laura Fine, um, regarding a small change to the township code um, noting that this year town, the township annual meeting had occurred on the first night of Ramadan, I asked that we revise it for the future so that if there is such a conflict in the future, townships would have the ability to move their annual meetings for Ramadan just as they currently do for Passover. Um, and that bill is almost is up for a second reading in its second chamber. 
um, and that's SB 2390, um, if the, those of you are interested in watching that come through. Um, as you're, in my individual capacity, I spoke at Commissioner Larry Sufferden's redistricting task force on May 19th about the importance of keeping Nutria Township in one commissioner district. You can watch that testimony on YouTube and learn more about the redistricting process and about the various interests um, that have come before that committee. Um, I've now met one-on-one -on -one with each of our full-time staff members, and next we'll be setting up individual meetings with all of you, um, the elected officials. Some important um, notes from those meetings include that peer jury orientations will be taking place this summer, including for those who had previously had orientation as a reminder of the process since we were not operating before during the pandemic, and we should be up and running by the fall. Um, further in, you know, in response to Brian's recommendation in his board report that we reimburse Northfield Township for serving our clients during the town hall closure, I believe that he can make such a allocation from our food pantry fund without additional approval. So please let me know if there's any disagreement on that as it has already been allocated for the purpose. Um, we are starting regular staff meetings after each board meeting um, beginning this week um, to ensure um, better communication between the board and the staff. Um, and we will hope that that process will you know, encourage collegiality between both bodies. Um, 2020 summer camp scholarships. I just received a report from Jean and our social work interns who are proposing $2,100 scholarships for 37 children in our community for a total of $55,933. This would require a line item transfer of 10% limit, which I would encourage this board to approve. Um, this, would, this would also co cover the full cost of camp for 20 children. Um, another important note on the summer camp scholarships, normally we require um, adjusted gross income from the previous year to be under $40,000. Because of the circumstances of this pandemic year, there are families whose, adjust, whose adjusted gross income as per their tax return do not reflect their current financial situation. Um, and I would agree with Jean's recommendation to allow families who are in financial need um, to, to be eligible for such scholarships. Um, I am also encouraging intergovernmental cooperation and have started that process by meeting with the new mayor of Wilmette, Santa Plunkett, and we'll set up additional meetings with other leaders from the municipalities that we serve. Regarding the agencies, committee liaison assignments, um, as, as um, Mr. Lively pointed out, there is a concern regarding, regarding the conflict of interest policy. Um, and therefore, we are. I am postponing making assignments to those committees until after we have completed um, our planned review of the funding process. Um, if Mr. Lively has not heard yet from Brian, I see Brian's on the call now. Um, he will um, inviting him and the other committee chairs to participate with Brian in that process. We will bring any potential um, conflict of interest policy or any changes to the process to this board for approval. Um, I have revised the funding letters from last year's, from this past fall through winter's um, funding allocations to include a introduction of myself and to encourage the agencies to partner with us. Um, and those will go out shortly. Um, sadly, we do not have access to, you know, some parts of the office that are required to make that happen. Last upcoming event is I want to encourage us all to, um, to recruit for additional committee members for our advisory committees. The advisory committees are the backbone of our funding process. Um, and we can, we in each of the three standing committees can use some additional, um, additional heads. Um, the forms are up on the website. We'll be including in the dispatch, um, the links as well. And I have now created a Google form so that for ease of of entry of anyone interested in participating in either agency oversight, money files, the person or mental health committees. We have a number of upcoming events that I want the board to be aware of. Um, we'll be meeting with Civic Plus to redesign a web, our website and fix some of the functionality problems ahead of the contract renewal deadline. Um, we, there are a number of toy webinars that the board should be aware of, including one about simply you're elected, now what do you do, um, as well as ones related to COVID-19, OMA, um, the Open Meetings Act, FOIA, 
and um, parliamentary procedure. Importantly, there will be a boot camp event in the in August. So any newly elected officials are encouraged to attend um, and anyone else who'd like to participate would probably be a very nice refresher. So those are August 12th or August 26th. We'll be having some outreach events coming up, including on June 2nd, we'll be having a student healthcare power of attorney webinar with North Suburban Legal Aid Clinic, which we are encouraging um, high school students to come and learn why they need um, power of attorney, power of healthcare attorney. And then um, we will have uh, offer notary service the next day. Um, we are also going to be having a township shred event June 26, 2021. We would appreciate volunteers for that as well. Um, I believe that Jack is working with the volunteer center and Kate who is on this call um, for, to make that happen. Um, and we appreciate St. Joseph Catholic Church for offering their parking lot for us so that we can make that happen. Um, finally, um, I'll be participating in an Illinois Environmental Council panel with Northfield Township Supervisor um, and former Vernon Township Supervisor on the use of townships to protect the environment and public health on June 14th at noon. Please let me know if you're interested in attending. CLE is available for attorneys. Um, do I, is there any questions related to my report? I have one, Gail. Yes, Are you saying that we should maintain our current committee liaison as is until what time? In the, in, um, so for right now we are going to collect additional committee members. This summer, um, I do not believe, and Brian, you can correct me if I'm incorrect, that the committees were planning on meeting um, during June, July. Is that correct, Brian? Muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, I would I would like to have a uh, a July meeting just because we haven't met the last couple of months. So we will definitely have either a July or August meeting this summer. So before the next meeting of the committees, we will have our committee uh, liaison assignments. Okay. The intention is for this small, you know, ad hoc committee of the committee chairs and Brian to meet during June before the funding um, applications go out in July. They right. go live in July. I will be in contact with Paul and the other committee chairs uh, shortly about a meeting. To Any other questions? Seeing none, clerk's report. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say I'm happy to be here and thank you for bearing with me as I learn my job. Um, and I accidentally forget trustees names. So I apologize and thank you for uh, your grace and as I, as I learn this new position and I look forward to working with all of you. That's my clerk's report for now. Perfect. Assessor's report and if we can um, spotlight Jan, um, that would be great, Jack. Um, my report is very short uh, because we haven't heard anything from the assessor still. Um, more official than quote, late May, close quote. And since we're there and haven't heard anything yet, I'm guessing late May isn't gonna be it either. So we don't yet know when we'll be open for appeals. And aside from that, uh, we're getting, we, we can do things for people. We can get them ready for people ahead of time. They just can't file them yet. So that's basically what we're doing because lots of people are asking, when are we going to open for appeals? Am I missing it? No, they're not missing a thing. So that's about it. Any questions for Jan? Oh, you're on mute. I will now ask that we adjourn to our public hearing. Is there such a motion? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. And, second. We have, and we officially have to do it by, by roll call. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Uh, Supervisor Sinsha Eisenberg. Yes. Um, Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Thank you. We are now in our public hearing. Um, I have asked our, our administrator, Diane Tai, to please offer an overview of the budget hearing uh, 
budget for the town fund and general assistance fund as published on our website and in the newspaper. Okay, thank you, Gail. Um, just gonna give a brief overview of what the process is. We do have members who have been here with us uh, for a while and understand that. But in essence, um, I will just start, you know, making a note that all of our fiscal years begin on March 1st of every year and end on February, the end of February, be it the 28th or 29th of the fiscal year. The budget process includes several items, which what I call our building blocks for the budget process itself. Um, at the end of December, uh, it's required by law to have it by the end of uh, the end 1221 or 1231, excuse me. We have the levy, which is approved. Uh, the process begins probably in late October, is reviewed with the board, and then the levy is determined um, to be posted and to be approved. The other item is at the end of the, excuse me, at the end of the fiscal year, we have to have all of these different pieces in place. The end of May, uh, routinely what we have done, uh, notwithstanding with the uh, pandemic in the last year or so, the budget is approved and then submitted to the county by the clerk by the end of May. Um, what we have as building blocks is what I refer to is the levy dollars that, that is determined. Those are the basically the largest income sources that we have for the township. The agency allocations, which take place, uh, as everyone knows, the end of the year finalizes and then is approved at the February board meeting. That then becomes one of the basic blocks for the new fiscal year. The year-end analysis is a very important piece that we, we look at and use, and use that basically as a guidepost for the forthcoming fiscal year. Since the budget is not required to be submitted until the end of the first quarter, which is the end of May, that gives us some time to do that and do the final closing and look at those, look at those items. Other items that are often added are new programs or any other kind of activities that the board might be looking at that can be woven into the fabric of the new forthcoming board or budget, excuse me. Routinely, and this is for the new members, uh, there are financials, there's two financials that are distributed on a monthly basis that give an overview, if you will, of the, of the overall functions and activities of both the town fund and the uh, general assistance. For instance, it's a two-page document. I'm sorry if I'm boring the other board members with this, but there's a two-page document that gives you a recap of the activity in terms of the revenues, whether it's levy, personal property replacement, interest, passport fees, whatever those items are. It gives you a snapshot. It also gives you a snapshot of the assets sitting in the bank so that you see a snapshot of the whole fund, if you will. The other report, which in my opinion is most helpful and is used um, really for planning purposes, for the budget purposes, for um, as Gail had mentioned, if we needed a transfer or something that takes place at the end of the year, is a, a report that shows the current budget versus that particular month. For instance, with the 12 months, if we were looking at and had a budget in place, we would be looking at the month of April. And that would be the two months into the budget process. Uh, but that document basically lays out every and any line item that we have had or have set up so that we can look at that and monitor it. It's important to monitor it because at the end of the year, as Gail had mentioned, there has to be uh, what is a line item transfer. I think we'll probably talk to this as you, you mentioned, Gail, about the summer camp item. Um, but for instance, if the uh, budget, let's say, which we have currently on this document was $60,000. And I believe you said, Gene said it was going to be 55. If it was going to be a larger amount, we would then have to uh, put that as an item if this indeed had been approved or is approved uh, that we would look at at the end of February. We do it once a year. Um, in the past, it had been done uh, multiple times. This is many years ago, and it gets quite um, cumbersome, if I will, if you will. Then we have one report. Uh, just a note that as, as far as the line items go, 
it's um, going to be a learning process for the new people on the board. Um, but I've included in the report, and Gail had mentioned we were going to talk about a log for the different vendors and repeating vendors. And it's in the board packet, and it's, uh, in, it's entitled a Cash Disbursements Journal. Uh, that will, and the one that's present right now in your board packet, or the one that you received, gives you two months, which covers these uh, check registers, if you will. And it gives you a recap. You can trace the actual document. It tells what the name of it is, what line item. And I think that that's an important thing, at least for the first couple months of this process. As we move forward, my plan is, <coughs> excuse me, to work with Larisha and to develop a, I guess a log is the best word, that will show you what are the uh, repeating items, whether they're, um, the local government health plan, whether they're something from the elevator company or whatever that case is, so you become more, more familiar. But this document, I think, would be helpful. Uh, if you just take a look at it, you can track it back and forth, uh, it, but it will give you the line items that will then coincide with this report that I'm referring to. So that is my overview on that. Um, I don't know, Gail, how you want to proceed with the budget process. Should I work walk through that? that Please do. Um, that's We're all looking at budget ordinance number 2021-1. Correct. Uh, this document had been prepared, um, reviewed with the board uh, past several months and had been presented as line items and looked at throughout the throughout the uh, uh, those couple months, looking at those different items. Just to highlight on the first page, the property tax, as I had mentioned before, um, that's one of the building blocks, if you will. That That is the levy that was approved in both cases uh, for the town fund and for the general assistance fund budget. Uh, that was the basis of the revenues. The other revenues were based on um, comparing the kinds of uh, revenues that we've received, uh, interest revenue, uh, the replacement tax, which have been continued. Uh, interest income, as everyone knows, has dropped quite much you know, quite reasonably. Um, passports, we're not currently doing the passports, but that is usually one of our um, items for the, um, for the revenues. The different items, this is this document, which is I believe six pages long, is the format that's required by the county. Um, and so this is really basically a reiteration of what I would call our line item budget. Um, just highlighting the second page will show the administration, the um, uh, yeah, the administration, the contractual services, all the different items that will appear, and you'll see the names appearing on that cash disbursement log as well. This is basically a, a compact collection of all those co costs. Uh, third page will outline the different programs and services. Agency block grants are those which the board had approved for the agencies uh, back in February. Um, and that was the, the different program dollars that are gonna be allocated. Those are due to go out, we make three payments. Those are due to go out the end of June. The other programs and services are uh, an, an, an area that we call POTS for short. It's programs of, excuse me, programs of, oh my gosh, now I'm forgetting. <laughs> programs of township significant township significant um, and it also includes that which we call the back to school uh, dollars amount those are dollars that we pay out so those are all built into this budget they will show up on this line items as you will see in the future uh, meetings or future documents other expenses other expenditures are listed uh, giving you the total the total budget and for programs and services for the township of the 3,332,950. That dollar amount, might I add, is not going to show on this document. That is not required um, in their totals, but that is what our total budget is being proposed to do for this year. Same information is being um, identified for the general assistance fund. Again, the property tax comes from the levy ordinance, I think it was 202 And those are the dollars that were prepared. Uh, the administration that represents the dollars that the board will approve 
uh, for the percentage of salary that the uh, that the Jean Rosser actually uses and for her her work in the general assistance fund. Um, the home relief will show will show the charges for the GA accounts, hospitalization and insurance. We have the emergency assistance, which I need to note has grown a great deal over the past uh, probably three years, if not a little longer. And I believe that trend is still still taking place. That will then give the general assistance account total dollars of, let me just grab my, my it would be on page four of the total expenditures is $503,100. So in essence, this is a recap of the work that's been done uh, the last pages provide the total dollars that we are proposing to um, ask for in our budgets and the total revenues that will be then, or that we're anticipating are gonna be collected. Again, noting that these are estimates, the board usually and has routinely done so in the past, been very close in their estimates over the different years. Um, one point in time, we had had um, a move through the several boards ago to reduce the dollars because there are certain restrictions on our revenues. Um, we're still doing that at this point in time. Um, this last fiscal year, we uh, I don't have the oh, I do have the document. The bottom line is the with the town fund was drawn down for about one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars. The general assistance. Uh, was an excess of revenues, if you will, at about $53,000, giving us an overall activity of $99,000. Uh, that is, in my opinion, very, very uh, reasonably um, close. I might note that the, the way the budget is uh, presented that we are anticipating more expenses in the forthcoming year. And that is something that uh, as the board moves forward and monitors these reports that we can address that. So that's the short version. <laughs> Are there any questions from either the trustees or the public? Because this is a public meeting. I have um, a quick question for Diane. Mm -hmm. Diane, on page two, under our projected building expenses, it's under the line item capital outlay. In hey, light page, of I, the recent fire. Page two, I'm um, sorry, I'm not tracking. It broke you, up. You see the building, the 9,000? I oh, um, I have a question about our building allocation of $90,000 on page okay. two, capital outlay. Oh, okay. And I wanted to ask you if you feel comfortable with that number in light of the fire. I mean, we have every reason to believe that insurance is going to make us whole, but inevitably in, um, in, in situations like this where there has been a, um, a loss, mainly the fire, Sometimes there there could be some unforeseen expenses, and I'm just wondering, Osticate, but do you feel comfortable with that ninety thousand dollars in light of the fire? Um, that's a loaded question. I do think that we certainly. I'm not concerned that we're not going to receive our monies for what has taken place. Uh, there will be additional expenses. Uh, to to ensure and have everything rechecked, if you will, by the different, you know, like our elevators and our uh, all of our different buildings thing, our um, heat and air conditioning. Uh, it's at this point in time, I, I think we would be okay unless something that is coming that's totally unexpected, as related to the fire. Those dollars will re be returned to the township. Um, I don't see the damage or any of the damage that um, might cause this to go over that, that wouldn't be covered by the insurance. But that's, that's like I'm saying, that's kind of a hard question to address. But if we're basing it on the fire alone, um, I would say that we're probably gonna be just fine because they're gonna reimburse that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I had a question for the sure. benefit of particularly the new people, would you explain what the replacement tax is? The replacement tax are dollars that which, and this goes back many, many years, dollars that the township no longer can, is eligible to charge to the um, different 
agent, not agencies, different associations or different companies. It's basically what I call payback tax. Um, we receive it. There's nothing that we um, that we calculate or, or whatever. These are, this is based right on out of the county. What I could do is uh, prepare, and there's like a little blurb that we have on that, and I could certainly circulate that to them. Um, but the property tax is do dollars that we the township don't levy or charge. It's charged. Those are dollars we lost in essence over the years, and the ability to to levy or to charge those taxes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Diane, if you wouldn't mind just giving us, you know, kind of the the basics on why the numbers don't match or don't need to match the revenues versus the allocations. The, I'm sorry, the revenues, where, where don't they match to the allocations? That we are into, that we are budgeting for more than our revenue. Uh, the, do, that the dollars do match in, in the levy dollars, unless I'm misunderstanding what you're asking. The property tax is 2.733177. And that was the those that were the dollar that was a dollar amount that was approved and levied in December, and the same thing uh, for the for the general assistance it was 417. The total levy tax ordinate was 3,157,99. And those dollars do match. If you're referring, Gail, to the uh, replacement tax, that's based on the previous year um, dollars that we had received. The forty-five thousand uh, dollars, the interest income uh, had gone down considerably. I'm just trying to find my notes. Oh, no. I was actually looking. Um, if you're, I'm on page five of six, comparing to page six of six. Um, you know, total appropriations three point eight million versus um, estimated revenues of three point two. And Gail, you. you wait, wait. The fact that we have an eight hundred and forty thousand dollars balance. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Okay. I'm not. Are you looking on page five? Are you looking at the the the, the dollars for the, the total dollars of three million three thirty two? Is that what you're referring to? And the five hundred three thousand. Those are the total. So that's because we're spending down the um, the current funds. No. Those are the. These are the dollars that we are proposing to, to expend, expend during that year. That's, that's what we're calling the, the budget, I think we're calling the uh, anticipated dollars. And those are the appropriations. The revenue is on the next page. Right, I'm saying that that 3.2 and the 3.8 don't match. And I just wanted um, a brief explanation as to how, you know, why that is permissible. Um, and okay, and perhaps in our case, with wise. Okay, what we're budgeting is for a five hundred thirty-eight thousand um, dollars overspend. Is that that's that's what, you, and that the year before the FY twenty twenty-one, it was five hundred five thousand seven ninety, and these are estimates. And I think I touched on this. These are estimates of what the board is anticipating drawing down. For the last fiscal year, for instance, the budget last year had anticipated a drawdown on our town fund of account of $505,000 plus. We only drew down $152,478. So this is a projection. This is an estimate of the budgeted activities. Uh, if the dollars aren't drawn down, then we, we don't draw that down because our dollars are uh, not returned or not lost in a budgeting process, they default back to our revenues and to our accounts. Right. Um, so, and then are we keeping to our, to the required accumulation limits? So I'm, um, I'm noting that we're not allowed to have township funds exceeding the amount equal to work reader than 2.5 times the annual average expenditure. Is correct. that why we're, that's why we're bringing it down. That's why we're anticipating and we're we're planning, if you will, and budgeting to mm -hmm. bring that down. Whether that takes place, we to have that take place, every one of these line items would have to be drawn down exactly to where that is or to an offset. Right. Um, the same thing with general assistance, noting that the general assistance account 
has been and continues to be um, a larger amount. And that's, we've discussed mm -hmm. that in past meetings. Right. And, and, and as, as we, you and I have discussed recently, um, you know, the general assistance fund is not subject to those, those 2.5 time annual expenditure level limits. And we are not permitted to transfer funds out of the general assistance fund as it is. Right. Um, last, the, was, last time was 200, 2003, we did that. So it's been a while. Um, the General Assembly was considering a, an act that would allow us to make a one, another one-time transfer, um, but it looks like that bill got amended pretty significantly. <laughs> um, so we'll see, what, we'll see what happens. But for those who are following our Township Accumulation Fund legislation, that would be SB 1799. Are there any other questions? For my teaching days, I know I'm supposed to give a little bit of a break and not just jump. No? Okay. At this time, I would, seeing no more additional questions or comments, I would now like to entertain a motion to reconvene our regular meeting. So moved. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Elliot. Nicole, if you wouldn't mind the roll call. Absolutely. Gail Schnitzer Rosenberg, supervisor. Um, Trustee Mosier? Yes. Trustee Robbins? Yes. Trustee Rubin? Yes. Trustee Thomas? Yes. Don't forget Trustee Schnitzer. Oh, I was first. Um, she did supervisor. Oh, did she? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, and I appreciate looking out for me, John. Um, we are now back in our regular meeting. At this time, I'd like to um, entertain a motion to approve the budget and appropriation ordinance number 2021-01. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there second. a second? And a second from Elliot. Roll call, please. Supervisor Spencer Eisenberg. Approved. Trustee Moser. Approved. Trustee Robin. Approved. Trustee Rubin. Approved. Trustee Thomas. Approve. Thank you, Nicole. Um, and just one typo we noted on uh, that I just noted on page six. It's um, the the before I sign the certificate of estimated revenues, we should change my name from Alan Goldberg to Gail Eisenberg. And just as a, a point of order, how much time we actually have to move pretty quickly on this, and will Nicole have to actually? Go down with this. Actually, I'll let Nicole um, report on that because she was really excited about what she found out. Absolutely. So you can go in person, I and mean, I could go to the loop, but you can also create an online account and file online. So I'm figuring that out over the next couple of days, and hopefully we'll create an account for New Tier Township, be able to file online. That's good. Yes, the Cook County clerk is is making progress as well. Um, and it, I think you were also getting at to how long we have to file. Um, the budget filing deadline is within 30 days of adoption, but no later than 7 30, 2021. So I was, I was excuse me, I was referring to uh, past years that we've done that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we certainly What's the have. protocol. <laughs> no. One question the document I'm looking at, and uh, Laricia, I'm going to ask you as well. The, you were saying that you're, you're not noted as supervisor. The document I have, in the, in the paragraph, not in the signature block. Oh, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. We both missed that because we both looked at that yes, number. Yes, I did. Of times. I looked right down <laughs> at the bottom. Yes, I did. Laricia, if you would uh, be able to change that then tomorrow. I'll change that. I was just about to say, I know that it was in the signature line. I didn't exactly. read the paragraph. That, okay. we, all, we all missed it. I looked, right, it I looked right yeah. down at the bottom line. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so we do, um, myself and Nicole will sign these documents. Um, in person, I think there's other things that we'll have to sign um, that Diane will help us out with, and we will get that set so that it can be filed. Thank you all. All right, our next order of business. Um, we have received um, re staff reports from both Brian and Jean, so I'm our community services administrator and social services administrator. I'd like to acknowledge these staff reports um, because Brian is on the call. And um, does anyone have any questions for Brian at this time? Let's 
Seeing none, thank you, Brian and Jean, for your reports. We'll include those in the minutes. Um, building operations update, I will turn it back to Diane. I, I would just have one comment. And again, sometimes it takes a catastrophe to figure out where we can tidy things up a little bit. It, in retrospect, if we could have backed some stuff up uh, on the cloud, we might have had better access in light of the fire. So going forward, I think we should, and I'm remiss in my own private practice of law, but we all have to spend a little bit more time focusing on backing stuff up to anticipate you know, outages and electrical problems and fires and so on. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Absolutely, but I, and maybe Diane can address um, some technological, you know, changes or what the te those technological struggles had been um, in her building operations update. Okay, um, the building operations update, as everyone is aware, is our target date is June first for the building to uh, the work to begin for the building. I uh, received a call uh, this afternoon and we are waiting to get the confirmation from the village of Winnetka and it is re and this is for our permit, which will then allow them to begin the work that will include as well as the digging up of the sidewalk and this is being looked at and evaluated with the water and electric department in the village. And the purpose of that is that they are now looking at making, which is, this is their system, uh, investing in a new three-phase three phase system for our location. That is related to the uh, pipe and the uh, wiring that, or pardon me, the different wiring that and the pipe that comes into the building through the vault, uh, which is about four feet from our, um, our building. So, the village is anticipated to receive or to give us a confirmation tomorrow um, that June 1st is the date. If that's the case, they will move forward. If that's not the case, they can't proceed until that takes place. Uh, the biggest part of the job, which has been a big hurdle, and I mentioned this to Gail when I spoke with her, is that the uh, that part of the building has uh, that's located out in front underneath the cement and through the dirt is basically ossified and they have to first come in, uh, get through the, all of the cement and dig this up and remove that, that pipe even. So that is my, pretty much that estimate, estimated time is still June 1st. If I receive something different, I'll certainly get a hold of Gail and let the rest of everybody know. Uh, the difficulties you were talking about with the, the cloud and that, and Elliot in a perfect world, we are backed up on the cloud um, with our I, new IT people. Uh, the issue is, is with the building being completely out, uh, that there is no electricity whatsoever. That cloud is not accessible um, unless someone has something, you know, saved or they went through the IT people to get that. Um, we do have a lot more um, flexibility with this with this new group. Um, they are also going to be addressing our phone systems, which everyone has heard all of this throughout the. Uh, the past several weeks, or five weeks, I should say. Uh, but the, the data is there. Uh, it is difficult in the case that you're able to pull something up. You can't walk into the building. You can't access that. Accessing your accounts is that which you may have saved wherever you would have saved that. Um, but though the, nothing is missing. And I think that that's the most important thing. We had had issues with that with the prior, the prior company. Uh, many, many issues and backup uh, was an issue. This is this is automatically backed up. I know that they believe they do it two to three times a day. So nothing is ever lost. Um, so to that point, I think that's enough said. Gail, if there's something else you wanted me to address. Um, just how long do you anticipate the work will take when it does start? The estimate was four to five days. And that was a, a routine estimate that was given by those vendors that did uh, look at the information of uh, like again the biggest piece is the front getting the wiring from the villages utilities and from their system into our building uh, the inside is basically then uh, pretty much a routine thing it's just getting it into the building so are there yeah. other questions from the trustees i have one diane when do you think the township will be operational in the township building uh, it, Technically, when the electricity is on, uh, we do have, and I have a list that's quite long of follow-up that we have to do with uh, the different vendors, 
for instance, the, the Comcast people we have to check with, the elevator people, the air and heating people, the building uh, has been dormant and cold and had been walked, cleaned up and uh, wiped down, if you will, the day after, two days after the initial fire. The building no longer really has too much of an odor to it, but it needs to be clean. It's been sitting there. And there's also, um, I think, the staleness of the building in and of itself. That can be done with without uh, keeping the building closed forever. I think given the time of year, we're very, very fortunate. Uh, we didn't have to bring generators in or anything of that nature. Sprinkler system is operative. Uh, that was done uh, in concert with the fire department because should anything else have taken place and there wasn't water, we could have lost the building altogether. That's not probable. But uh, to answer your question, once we get the electricity up, uh, we can then start uh, getting all the different vendors. Obviously, the IT people and the phone people would be top of the list to get everything, make sure everything's in place. And I know Comcast because that is our, that brings in our, uh, our work, our support, if you will, for the IT people. Um, so within a week after that, we would hopefully be able to start to get the vendors in there and get the building open. Uh, I would like to have a plan for that so that we can do that in succession. There is, um, and that's part of the insurance companies, uh, there is work that has to be done in the basement. The, uh, the dry, the, the boards and all that are, are basically mold, if you will. The buildings had mold prior to this. We've held off on doing any kind of drywall or anything of that nature. It's not causing any problems. It's been clean and sprayed around there, um, but it is going to be musty and we're going to have to have that kind of work. But that again can be done when the building is open. Diane, are you thinking 30 days out, 45 days out? I'm asking for a reason. From the date, the time that the electric gets in there, you're saying from the, well, the, it's the a whole week process. Or so. They're, permit, they're, the electricity, the open. I, I'm trying to get to a finite number. And the reason I'm asking is because I'm curious as to whether we should, even at this late date, consider doing some kind of alternative office operations in the meantime, given that we are closed down for business. And that concerns me. And that's where I'm coming from. If within a week they can finish that, um, and I've, I, I think, I would say two weeks. I know that that's probably very, very uh, ambitious uh, because in order to get everyone in there and functional, the IT and the Comcast and the phones and that are the, the priority. Um, and that would have to be, I, I, I can't give you that estimate until, until they are able to get in there once the building and they can figure out what's going on with the Comcast. Do you think two weeks from today's date, the building no. will be operational? No, no. If they're going to start the work on June 1st, which was two, which is next Tuesday, the day after the holiday, and they're estimating four to five work days, then we're looking at that week plus one day, perhaps, to have that work finished. Once that Diana, address... I, I'm sorry to be so persistent, but I'm curious. Are the permits issued to start the work on Tuesday? They are, they've been presented where they're waiting for the permits to be approved by the village and what's holding this up is the water and electric company because a piece to finish the, or start the work involves the village's system that comes into the, into the building. And that comes from the village. Okay, Excuse so we really me. don't, go ahead, John. Excuse me, Diane. The water, when you say water and electric, is that the village water and electric? Yes. Okay, so it's not consolidated Edison or something. Uh, I will tell you right now that you're in deep hot water because those people are very competent, very thorough, and move like snails. I've dealt with them for years. Um, I, and I, I would just I add have a question too when, when, when the other trustees are done. The only thing I can say is from um, lots of experience doing work on older homes, older pieces of property, is that once there's an incident and you go in there, you, 
you always find almost always inevitably that more has to be done than you were contemplating. So I would be really amazed. I think it would be outstanding if from the moment the permits are issued from start to finish, I think one month would be outstanding, Diane. If they could be done in five to 10 days, that would just be incredibly shocking, shockingly good news. I think it could take a month easily. If I, I cannot speak for what the village system is, other than what I've received the information, how long this is gonna take them. If our, our contractor is saying it's four to five days to complete their work, it is dependent, however, upon the village. So it circles back to the village. Um, so it, if, and that is not an unusual estimate for the work that's got to be done. And the, the work that's done, the contractor is going to be digging and putting through the, the piping, but the piping comes from the village. And so if that system, it, it has to be cleared by them, I guess, is the best way to say that. And I don't have any idea if they, I will know tomorrow what their, what their um, intention is. But from what I understand, that is what's being, that this three-phase system is whatever this is from the village is what the water and electric department of the village of Winneka is, is re referring to. And that's a piece of that which has to come into the building. One one additional question. Um, I think I heard you say that there might have been some pre-existing mold or rot of some kind, and I would hope we would take this opportunity to remediate all of that. As long as we're doing work, let's you know get it all done. And that's why you know I asked about what we've set aside for building because you know once you got everything opened up and you're fixing it, let's let's make it a good fix. And we've done, right, and we've done that in the past, and we've had that assessed. Uh, that is on hold until the building electricity is set up. Then they can come in whether the building's open or not. There's no light in there now, so that wouldn't be practical for them to come in and do that. Um, I, as Stefan is saying a month. I guess that that's. I don't know if if he's if you're referring Stefan to setting up the office somewhere else. Is that what you're? Yes, referring? that's what I'm suggesting. It, for twofold reason. One is it takes the pressure off in terms of timing to get things accomplished. It allows us to do it appropriately and it allows us to get back into operation sooner rather than later. So that's, that's my objective. I don't know if it's appropriate, but I think it's something we certainly need to consider. And that's why I raise it. Yeah. I think if we tomorrow to get an answer or at least a response that from the village saying what that is. And realistically, if they said, oh, it's gonna take us two weeks, then, then you are correct, it's gonna push it out. The only control we have is what the contractor is saying will take them to do the repair work in our building. So maybe tomorrow would be the point in time to say, you know, what is the answer for this? And we'll have a better sense of that. And then, you know. And part of the problem, Diane, and I work in the, sectors as well. If we're coming to a holiday weekend, that's going to set us back another couple of days because everybody's going to leave early Friday and not be there Monday. And I'm just concerned that we need to get operational as soon as possible. And I think that that's what we as the township need to do. We have the resources to be able to do it. And I think it's a matter of deciding that that's an appropriate way to go. I, my inclination is to say, if we don't have answers in a couple of days, five business days, whatever number you want to put to it, that we need to consider an alternative operation so that the township can become functional in full capacity as soon as possible. Now, Stefan, um, that, is, that is also assuming that we are not functional right now without the town building. We're not. Um, well, I, we have a number of staff members here um, and I'd like to open the floor to them as well. Um, but yes, it, it's my understanding that those who, that um, Jean has been meeting with people outside of the office, everybody's responding to email and phone calls. Um, obviously we do not have the pantry going right now. We don't have, um, you know, we didn't have during, at all during COVID any of the passports or other, you know, in-house, um, uh, services. 
Um, but if our staff members would like to weigh in, um, whether you feel we need to rent additional space or if ad hoc use of other governmental entities spaces has been sufficient as well as you know simply going to local businesses and um, and in that I I'm referring to the use of um, the Winnetka Police Department's classroom which I know Jan has has used and we we're using for our staff meeting as well. Right. May I ask a question first, please? please. Um, Diane, I just wondered what date, the exact date that was on, is on the permit itself, that the date it was applied for uh, to the village. June 1. Sorry? June 1. No, June I mean, 1st. what date was it submitted? I don't have that information. I know that the requesting date to start was June the 1st. Oh, okay. Just because I, I spoke to someone in the permit department a few weeks ago um, when, when we were discussing, when, not discussing, when Lynn and I were talking about what we might be doing for space. Um, and she said that the uh, optometrist across the street, she was able to fast track his permit, uh, and that's with the Village Electric and the Village Water in order to get it inside of a week so he could get set up. So I'm just wondering, since you sent this, uh, you sent an email out before the special meeting that there was a June date uh, in the works, um, what's been going on in the intervening 10 days that has prevented the permit process from moving forward? I'm not the one that submitted the, the uh, permit, if you will. It went through the contractor and the contractor advised uh, the insurance company, as well as myself, that June 1st was the date that they were anticipating. That they were going to submit a permit on June 1st? Start the work. Or, okay, so they've submitted a permit, and but you don't know when it was submitted. You're asking me for the date on that. I, don't, I did not submit the permit. The contractor did. I understand that. He didn't tell you when he did it? I, I didn't ask him for a copy of it. And he said he had submitted it, and the anticipated date was the June 1st. May I suggest that it would be a good idea if somebody had a copy of it? We will eventually. The insurance I, company will. And I think well. it would probably be a really good idea, <laughs> trustees, if, if you look for alternative space. <laughs> Just my suggestion. Thank you, Jan. Um, any of the other staff members have any questions or comments regarding current use of space and the need for a temporary space? I have a comment. Yes. Um, you know, define operational. That's my concern. I'm basically, with, um, unless I have access to my computer, um, which would entail moving all the computers out of the office, hooking them up somewhere else, which is a huge job. And then when we, um, unless I have access to a computer, um, there's no sense in, in uh, having an alternative space. And depend, if, if, if we're only talking a month or so, spending all the time to basically unhook all of our computers, put them in another space, and then move them back again doesn't seem, seem sort of silly. The second thing is, if, if operational means operating the food pantry, that means moving all the food in the building to another site. It means having freezers available at another site, and then having meat delivered to those freezers, and then having to move it all back again to the township building. I would just assume it makes more sense to see if we can be if we can be open by July first. I don't see the point of, of having a, a, a different site. Um, so I think the the contractors are going to have a sense after a week if they can be open reasonably close to the even if it's two weeks. We should be operational by July first. I don't see the point of moving everything to another building um, and then having to move it all back again almost immediately and. Like I said, unless I have access to a computer, um, we're not going to be fully operational anyway. And we don't have access to our computers. I have so much information on my computers right now that I can't access. I can't revise the funding forms. I can't start a peer jury without the computer, without my computer and all the information there. We can't do uh, funding letters without the computers. And so, I mean, that's my take on it. I think so that goes, brings back what Elliot was saying about everything being on the cloud. I know that we have just recently switched to Microsoft 360. Um, I think that some additional training might be in order so that staff can learn how to access those documents um, remotely um, so we can be ready for any other future emergencies. Well, we can access our email remotely right now, but it's limited. Yes. 
And it's, so it's unreliable. Our 365 doesn't have anything to do with us working from home. It's our VPN access. And if we don't have our VPN access, then we can't access anything. I can't access my Dialeride. I can't access my Outlook, like my email contacts. You can do it in Rackspace, but I don't have, I have groupings for trustees for the board meetings. Um, I think what Stefan is saying by operational is for me, as far as being able to make copies, things that I cannot do at home, deposits, um, we are not set up to work remote. So as far as operational is concerned, I get what Brian is saying about the food pantry, but for me, I would like to have somewhere designated to make copies. I don't care if we partner with somebody um, because I feel very disorganized being at home because this job is not, you know, it's not a job that's meant to be done from home or, you know, ever been attempted to do so. So my mm -hmm. whole life, as far as my job is in that office. Um, Likewise. And we've done whatever we can do from home, but um, it's not the best operational wise, like what Stefan was saying. Um, that's my personal take on it. And Len brought my computer to me one afternoon and we hooked it up. It's done. I mean, it was plug, 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 all done. He carried it over from the office. Now we had to wait for the VPN for our specific software because that entailed getting the programmer for that software in with HTML and having the two of them work out a temporary fix for us that would work. And that took a couple of days, but as far as I understand um, HTML's abilities, certainly, a, a straightforward VPN for something that, that is already in your system, that is, that is in someone's computer, Brian's or Jean's or Larisha's, that, that HTML already has access to would, would be a matter of minutes or something or an hour or two or something to get set up. And so that if, I mean, if the staff could have their computers at home um, or did have their computers at home with their own VPNs, um, I, they'd all be able to function more efficiently. I feel like for me to do letters and get out acknowledgements of donations and things like that, that's not even something that I can do at home without having to literally drag all of my stuff from there. Um, which is exactly the reason why I agree with what Stefan says to a certain extent, because I can't do my job from home. I mean, I've been getting through obviously for this past couple of months and I go and I meet a couple of the clients at the township. If they're picking up dollar coupons or something like that, but everything that I do is on paper, you know, as far as filing and stuff like that can wait um i do have you know i brought home letterhead and stuff like that but as far as like the changeovers with the new elected officials and stuff like that i don't have my letter templates and um things like that so that's that's where my concern comes like from the administrative assistance stance mm -hmm. i can't really do much here and my printer here is not meant for heavy duty printing, like what I would do at the office or even copying, because when I get deposits, I make copies of the checks. Um, and one copy goes to Diane and one copy is kept for filing with the letter that I send out as the acknowledgement. So there's those little snags um, for me. I don't I see how you have it. Else, but I can you want to operate a food pantry, you got to have a space for it. It doesn't make sense to have me running all the administrative stuff and committees from home while I'm running a food pantry at the site of a food pantry. That's that's just as inconvenient as now. You know, I'm at the if I, if we're ever, if the food pantry is up and running, I got to be there for five hours mm -hmm. or whatever our, our pantry is. It's open, and so I'd like to have my computer there. I can't yeah. run the food pantry for five hours and then come home and do stuff on my computer. They they need to be in the same place. Well, it sounds like there's no one size fits all solution in this case. Um, I thank all the staff for providing their insights and I will continue to work with both with you and Diane to make sure that you are being supported as we um, prepare to reopen and possibly finding um, temporary sites for those who need it. 
And I just would um, say, Gail, take a close look at the business interruption language mm -hmm. in the policy. Because when I think about what we're discussing, I'm starting to think like maybe the insurance company should make that payment to Northfield for what they've done. I mean, we may be entitled to a lot of benefits here that we haven't even contemplated. And we wanna read um, and have a good command of our coverage for what it's worth. Absolutely, and I know Jan has brought that up in the past. So I appreciate you both bringing that up. Um, all right, um, I will now move on to our next order of business, the annual regular meeting schedule. Um, Larisha has included that um, proposed schedule in your board packets, um, your, your digital board packets. Let me just make sure I have it up. Does anybody have any discussion about the proposed schedule? Seeing none, I would appreciate a motion to accept the schedule through the end of the year for Board of Trustees meetings. So moved. Second. Is there a second? John Thomas is second. Um, Nicole, if you wouldn't mind, a roll call. Please. Supervisor Spencer Eisenberg? Yes. Trustee Mosier? Yes. Trustee Robin? Yes. Trustee Rubin? Yes. Trustee Thomas? Yes. Thank you, we have approval. We could publish that on our website as soon as possible so that we are in compliance with that requirement as well. Okay, um, is there any continuing business? Yeah, I think you addressed it earlier, but we have the whole question of the committee assignments as it relates to the ethics issue. That was something that we were going to either set up a subcommittee for or something so that we could look into that in depth and get resolution. So I just want to reiterate that that is something that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Absolutely, and, and per my supervisor's report, we are going to have a, sub, a subcommittee of the committee chairs, Brian and myself, who will then present a proposed um, uh, policy to the board for approval before the committees reconvene. May I ask a question, uh, especially of those of you um, probably Stefan, who's been uh, around the board quite a while. Um, in many boards that I've been on before, whether they be corporate boards or public boards, uh, <clears throat> when a policy question was to be discussed, uh, maybe even decided upon, it was always subject to two readings. And by that it was, uh, you say, okay, next month we're going to discuss and come to a decision on this, that, or the other. Uh, and if it's a policy issue, uh, these other boards um, would say, uh, okay, that's good, we'll do that. And we're going to make the final vote uh, a month later. I don't know that, that nothing that I see in this monstrous book called Laws and Duties Handbook covers that because it doesn't cover conflicts of interest except uh, in contracts for construction or something. But uh, my suggestion is when we start discussing uh, policies, something that, that will it result or not in a new policy, we ought to keep in mind that it should not be, I wouldn't want to look at it as a one-time discussion. Thank you, John. Um, I agree that I'm not seeing any requirement to have two readings in our current laws. Um, obviously, um, we will provide a the full proposal to the board and it will be up for discussion um, and can be voted on at that hearing, uh, but need not be as well. Um, any other continuing business? Yes, uh, on the conflict of interest issue that um, Paul Lively brought up, I want to make sure that we are we have a plan to move forward and to discuss and if necessary get an opinion of council so we can formulate really good policy and not have any issues going forward. So uh, supervisor, what can you tell us about that? As I said, it's going to a committee. Um, that will be then sent we will create a proposal using both the committee and if the committee sees fit, we will seek counsel and yeah. it'll come to what, you. Can you clarify what you mean by committee? Are you going to form a committee? Yes, as I have mentioned, it will be the committee chairs, myself and Brian. 
Excellent. Any additional continuing business? Seeing none, new business. Um, is there a resolution offering greetings from New Trier to the city of Trier, Germany? Did, did we ever see a written resolution from uh, our, pri our prior clerk? I have a written resolution. I asked him to present it to a trustee to propose it. Um, did that occur? I Kelly, did you get it? Uh, I I received um, in my packet um, the kind statement regarding Trier, Germany, um, but nobody consulted me. But I think what what was written seemed to be um, acceptable. I don't know if this is a bilateral thing. Are they doing something over there in uh, in Germany? My understanding is Jerome is traveling to Trier. And would like to be able would like to officially present this resolution along with some memorabilia um, as a showing of good faith. Um, well, is there a trust? Uh, if you're asking for a motion, um, Supervisor Eisenberg, I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Um, Madam Clerk, if you wouldn't mind the roll. Everything, Supervisor Schnitzer Eisenberg. Yes. Trustee Moser? No. Trustee Robbins? Yes. Trustee Rubin? Yes. Trustee Thomas? Yes. The yeas have it for the A's. Thank you. We will now, and um, seeing no additional new business on the agenda, we will now move on to the approval of claims. John Thomas, and if you wouldn't mind, feel free to be a little bit more explanatory in this initial first meeting of our new board than you might normally have been. Um, the rules of trustees in Illinois ask or require that uh, all expenditures by a township be uh, reviewed and approved by the board. And as a practical matter, this is done several different ways. One of which is that we get monthly a uh, often long list uh, of checks written. And one can scan that list. And if you have a question, you can ask Diane or you can ask somebody else. And then at the board meeting, uh, we typically have uh, made a motion to approve that and it was usually town fund and payroll lists of checks. Uh, we haven't been doing that as assiduously as we should, but we will get back to it um, next month. I can't give you the proper motion with all the numbers because I only got the material that I needed to make up the motion uh, this morning or midday today. Uh, those of you who downloaded and, and read some of the stuff, we've only got one new trustee, really. Um, and she probably looked at all of these lists of checks and said, my golly, what's that all about? Well, what it's all about is that the statutes for townships require that the expenditures all be reviewed and approved by the board of trustees. And that's how we do it. We get these long lists, we read them, I hope, or not, it's up to the individual, but we then at each board meeting uh, approve uh, this long list of checks uh, in one motion. We don't go through them check by check. And that's what uh, approval of claims, we call them claims, but the people lay a claim on us and say, you owe us $17.10, so we write a check for it. And it's up to us as a group to approve that. And so that's what it's all about. Uh, you'll hear more in detail next a month from now, I hope. Thank you, John. Um, I will also note that the statutory duty of the trustees is to audit those bills. That is 
pretty much the one job on there. So I hope everyone takes it as seriously as they can. As Diane mentioned, we'll be putting together this glossary of repeat vendors. Um, we do not post our check registers online for um, because there does include a number of our um, social service clients um, and it would be a major privacy concern. Um, just as a note on the ones that we have received today to review, um, you'll note a lot of personal names. Um, I believe it's the ones that are for 1,200 um, are all community support grants um, for your reference, Danielle. Um, it'll usually be pretty evident when something is a, you know, a, a summer camp scholarship because it'll be to a random camp um, and you will get to know a lot of the vendors um, that come up over and over again, such as our, our wonderful communications, Jack McCall, Wisdom Bridge, um, and our graphic designer, for instance. Um, are there any questions on the, the claims that had been presented and Elliot, are you, Elliot and Stefan are either of you in a position to make that motion? Elliot, you're on mute. Elliot, Elliot, you're on mute. If John doesn't have the specifics in front of him, I can only attempt to perform the service that he so eloquently and capably performs. I'll give it a try if you want me to. I would appreciate it. Thank you. So I know that there was some talk about something having already been done because what I have in front of me are town fund ledgers, actually four of them. One is for February 1 to February 28. One is for February 28 specifically, and those are um, um, those are the individual, those mostly are the individual payments under the community service grants. Then I have a ledger from March 1 to March 31, and I have a fourth ledger from April 1 to April 30. Now, would any of these be duplicate ledgers that we've already approved? The first there, yes, there is a, a claims for the month of February that took place in March. Um, and Larisha, you might want to jump in there, which one you're referring to. The, the numbers, I don't have them here. Let me just grab my batch. There's two, we had approved the first batch in the month of March, and those did not include the community support grants. Those had not been um, completed yet by Gene's office. Uh, also, and I think I maybe discussed it at one of the meetings that as we close the financial year, we end up waiting till all of those bills come in that are applicable for that year. Thus, the second batch um, where you're seeing the majority of those, well, 200 and some plus uh, charges for the $1,200. So I don't know, Larisha, do you have your documents there in front of you? Uh, I, think I, I think the one that you wanna look at is February 28th through February 28th. Yes. So we've approved check numbers 25698 through 25765, which is the February 1 to February 28 period. We don't have to deal with that today. Right. The one starting with 25766 is in my notes. Yes. yes. So I guess my motion would be to approve um, three um, check registers. The first one being February 28th, which is primarily the community support grants. That would be check number 25766 through check number 25979 for a total of 287,526 dollars and 49 cents. And we can do these one at a time or I can do all three of them together. Supervisor Eisenberg, do you have a preference? Is there any objection to doing them all together? I would. I would, I would, Stefan I would does object. Okay. So we'll start questions. with the first. Uh, yes. Uh, discussion. All right. On the February 28th checks, I note that some of the checks are 1,200, some are 2,400, some are 3,600, and some are 4,800 made out to one individual. So I'm trying to understand what that, how that happens. What that is, is a grouping uh, that Gene puts together when there's multiple people or multiple family members um, and they 
asked for the payment to be made directly to one person for whatever those reasons are for the dependents. Um, so those are multiples of the $1,200. She groups them. So if somebody got a check for $4,800, did they make four applications for four different individuals? Yes, she would have that grouped as that one, those four that, individuals. And that would all be part of the same household? Yes, or responsible therefore of that household. She has that in her notes and the details of those of those payments. Okay. I just want um, to understand how it works. Sure. And just yeah. to, to respond to what Elliot said, I would suggest if we're going to do this, approve the township, those are which township um, agendas, pardon me, a township uh, check registers and then the payroll registers so that we're not combining the two of them because there's a diff different set. That's my suggestion. And just, for the record, just for the record, I want to comment, Stefan, um, I reviewed that five page um, register very carefully and I only saw two families at 4,800 and maybe one or two at 3,600. The vast majority of these are 1,200 for, for the record. Elliot, I, I understand that. I was trying to clarify for the record why some people got substantially more than others. That's Perfectly a good question. A good question. Um, Elliot had made a motion to approve. Can you please repeat that motion, Elliot? Yes. Um, <laughs> On the first set. That we approve uh, the check register uh, under town fund for the period of February 28th, which would be checks 25766 through check 25979 for a total of $287,526.49. Is there a second? I second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please Supervisor, call the roll. Supervisor Spencer Eisenberg. Approved. Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Did Trustee Thomas? He abstained, but he's off the record. Oh. Abstained. So. <laughs> Thank you. If we do have enough votes, um, is um, I would now entertain a motion regarding um, the payroll. Well, do you want to go through the other two um, township fund you know, checks? Yes, that does make sense. Let's stick with the town. Mm -hmm. So the second um, township fund register is for the period March 1st through March 31st, 2021. And it begins with check number 26051. And it ends at 26063 for the amount of $19,442.16. I would move that we uh, approve this allocation. Is there a second? Second. Seeing a second, are there any, is there any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Schnitzer Eisenberg. Approve. Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Abstain. Yeah. Thank you. We do have enough votes. I have a uh, third town fund check register. This will bring us more or less up to date. It's for the period April 1 through April 30, 2021. And it consists of check numbers 26064 through 26098 for a total of $61,314.34. And I move that these allocations be approved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Question, who are the Dupli group? Diane. Hi, the Dupli group is the group that works for uh, Wisdom Bridge and they do the printing and the um, preparation and uh, delivery of the uh, documents. Marketing, yes. The, cur the courier. Courier. Thank you. 
Roll call. Uh, Supervisor Schnitzer Eisenberg. Approve. Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Abstain. The ayes have it, it passes. Supervisor Eisenberg, I have two payroll um, ledgers, one for March of 2021 and one for April of 2021. Um, the first payroll ledger, the one for March of 2021 includes check 7777 through check number 7793 in the total of $29,820.56. I move that uh, this that these allocations be approved. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Senator Eisenberg. Approve. Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Abstain. It passes. Thank you. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. We have one final oh, payroll. Yeah. Supervisor we have one more payroll. I will not entertain a motion to adjourn. I will entertain a motion to approve the payroll. This will be the uh, final um, uh, payroll. It brings us up to date more or less from April the 1st through April the 30th, 2021. It's a payroll um, register with checks number 7794 through check number 781 zero in the total amount of $25,109.03. And I move that these allocations be approved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Schnitzer Eisenberg. Approve. Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Abstain. It passes. One quick question for Diane. Diane, do we need to be signing these and getting them to the township or how are we handling the signing? In the past, we had had the sign off. I would recommend you do that sign off unless um, the new clerk has a, a different request for that and then send them, mail them to her or email them to her. Madam okay. Clerk, any, any uh, comments or I don't have a preference right now. I think we should go with this um, how it was previously done. And if I want changes, we'll talk about it the next section or the next time. Appreciate it. Okay. Now I will and entertain. <laughs> nope. Nope. I would just say one last thing about this. And then Nicole, when we next get together in person, my guess is there'll be a few unsigned documents. So hopefully mm -hmm. you'll be able to organize them. And when, once we're on the same roof again, God willing, in July or August, as soon as possible, then you'll make sure we, we fill in anything that hasn't been signed. Absolutely. I'll have a very uh, new pen. <laughs> exactly. One for each of us, <laughs> like you did at the uh, at inauguration. And Elliot, you do need to sign your, your oath of office within eight days for Nicole as well. <laughs> um, so I'm just uh, making sure you do that. <laughs> will, will you be able to get that to me, Nicole? Elliot, I can um, send you a, an email and you can mail it back to me. Perfect. If that would work for you. I will be happy to do that. I will be honored to. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations on being smart in, Elliot. And Thank now you. I will entertain the motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. And please call the roll. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Senator Eisenberg. Yes. Trustee Mosier. Yes. Trustee Robbins. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. We're adjourned. Have a good night, everyone. Everyone stay.